Now we know, come to chapter 3, what does Adam do? Apparently I got the slides out of order, that's the problem. It wasn't that I didn't have it there, it just got them out of order. Genesis chapter 3, look at verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of, eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Do you know that work only became drudgery after the fall? Work became drudgery after the fall. Because before Adam's fall into sin, all Adam had to do was to dress and to take care of this pristine environment that God created. But then after the fall, the ground is cursed, and that very ground from whence all that beauty came is now going to work against Adam. But you know what? (coughs) Come with me to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. God's, now, if you are a believer, has your sin problem been dealt with? Has it been taken care of? So now, God's will for the body of Christ is that our work would serve as a testimony of His grace. Now that we have been justified and redeemed from sin, we have the capacity to restore our work back to the purpose for which God created work to begin with as a means of serving who? Him. You see these commercials, you hear these commercials on the radio, they talk about the high calling of our daily work. You heard that commercial on the radio? Maybe you haven't. I, I've, I've heard it quite a few times. I, I like it because I think of these verses. Ephesians chapter 6, look at verse 5. Servants, be obedient unto them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of, singleness of, of your heart, as unto who? Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as, notice, as the servants of who? Of Christ. Doing the will of God from what? It is God's will that you and I work. And take care of our responsibilities. And it is also because of redemption. Now God has redeemed us from sin. And He's put us back in a right relationship with Himself. And now in our work, we don't work anymore just for ourselves. We work in service to God. That's what He's saying. The high calling of your work has been restored through the work of Christ on your behalf. Verse 6. Not with thy service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Notice verse 7. With good will, doing service as, here it is, to the Lord and not to who? When you, go to, when you wake up and you go to that job tomorrow morning, you are going to that job to serve God. You are not going to that job to serve anyone else. You're going to that job in obedience to God, in obedience to His Word, to serve God and provide for your family. That's why you're going. And because you are now a believer, you have been redeemed from... You have been restored back to a place where you can work for the Lord instead of working for the man. Okay? Verse 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing a man doeth, the same shall he receive of who? The Lord. Whether he be bond or what? So these verses do not just imply to the one who is a slave. They also apply to the one who is what? Free. Come to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, we already read verse 22, (coughs) as we near the end here, verse 22, servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, 
Not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing who? Look at verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, and not unto who? See, we need to be reminded of these things, don't we? We need, we need to be reminded to have a scriptural view of our work and of our money. Because our flesh will distort how we view these things if we let it. It will distort. Why should believers work? Believers should work for two reasons. Number one, to provide for the needs of their families. Paul says, having food and raiment, let us therewith be what? Content. The second reason that believers should work is to support the local assembly. It takes resources and finances and money to turn on the lights and to give you donuts and to have a study and to run the projector and to make the coffee and to do all these things. And a believer who is seeking to become sound doctrine ought to allow their wallet to be a grace believer. Because what happens when people come to understand grace, they learn, aha, I don't have to tithe, and God's not going to punish me for robbing God, so I'm not going to do anything. Can I tell you that that's not an attitude that becomes sound doctrine? Can I tell you that that's, if that is your attitude towards your work and towards your money, that you're missing the point of doing things heartily unto the Lord and not unto who? Unto men. In conclusion, come with me to two passages. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You need to know why you go to work. You go to work because God's Word said you should go to work. When you're at work, you serve the Lord, and what you bring home from work should, is, is, is fundamentally for two purposes. Number one, to see to the needs of your family, having food and raiment, let us there with be content, and also to see to the needs of the local church. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, look at verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also what? bountifully. Listen, that's a principle of life. If I drop one seed in the ground, I'm going to get one of whatever it is. But if I sow a bunch of them, I'm going to get what? A bunch. Verse 7. What are the first two words of verse 7? What are the first two words of verse 7? Just so we didn't miss it, what are they? Every man. Okay, so who are we talking about? Every man. Every man according as he hath, as he purposeth in his own heart, so let him what? Give. If your attitude toward giving is that you drop whatever loose change you have in, that's not what that verse is teaching you about giving. That verse is teaching you that you should purpose in advance to do something. Doesn't it? According as He hath purposed where? In His heart. So let Him give. Your giving to the Lord ought to not be the last thing on your radar. It ought to be right up there on the front. When you, when you, are, when you are taking care of your obligations, it needs to be something that is purposeful. According as he hath purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth what? A cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, might abound to every what? It is a good work when the believer purposes in his heart what he's going to do financially or she is going to do financially and then sets out to make sure that they accomplish what they purposed in their heart to do. Listen, you can go to some churches and all you're ever going to hear about is money, 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 money. We don't even take up an offering because we want to be as non 
offensive as we can in this issue. And as gracious as we can in this issue. But you, you and I as believers, we need to evaluate our own heart and our own mind and our own life. And if our heart attitude is that we are going to come and consume things and, and, ha, and walk out with no regard or understanding that that took financial resources and wherewithal from the saints to provide that stuff, that is not an attitude that becomes sound doctrine, folks. That is not an attitude that is in line. I'm not telling you how much to give. If you didn't give a dime, you're not going to lose your salvation. Nothing is going to happen to you, but I accept, come with me to uh, Philippians chapter 4. There's, a re there's reward associated with our financial stewardship, folks, at the judgment seat of Christ. And we don't want to give necessity. We don't want to give grudgingly. We need to give as we've purposed in our heart and do it how? Joyfully. As unto the Lord. You, should, you know, you need to just be glad you're not living back under there in Acts 5. And have to sell everything you have. See, that doesn't work. You ever notice how the, the tithing Pentecostal preachers never teach Acts 5? Because if they did, no one would go to their church. But if they're going to be true to the kingdom message and the message of Jesus and the Gospels, isn't that the Gospel they should teach regarding giving? Philippians chapter 4, look at verse 14. Paul writes to Philippians and he says, Notwithstanding ye have well done, that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the Gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye what? Only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Notice, not that I desire a gift, here it is, but I desire fruit that it might abound to your what? Account. What you do with your money says everything about what you really care about. Everything. How you spend your time and what you do with your money says everything about what you value, what you esteem, what you appreciate as a believer. And he says, not that I desire a gift, but that I desire fruit that it may what? Abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you. Notice what he calls them. An odor of a sweet smell. A sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to who? To God. See, believer, listen, see, saints, we have the high calling of our daily work restored to us through the work of Christ. So we don't have to work for the man anymore. We work for Christ. And as we work for Christ, we have to understand why we work. We have to understand what the fruit of our work is and what the Bible teaches should be the primary focus in how we appropriate that. We don't talk about giving and stuff like that. It's not even every week that we remind people about the offering can. But you need to understand that the assembly has financial needs. And I'm not trying to beat up anybody or or anything like that. But it's just the reality of life. And we appreciate everything that everybody does to those ends. You've been watching Just Grace It, a production of Grace Life Bible Church. Salvation is free. Put your faith in the shed blood of Christ as the only payment for your sins. If you are interested in joining a community of believers who rejoice in who God has made them in Jesus Christ, call or write to us or visit us online at justgraceit.com.